so good evening participants welcome to this uh, weekly interactive session so this is week 5 so as you know this course is on introduction to multimodal urban transportation systems and the course instructor is, is dr arkupal goswami and i am suman ganguly i am a pmr of research scholar at iit kharagpur so let's start the session for today so as you already would have known that this session is a kind of interactive one so first i will just read out the question and maybe the participants will try to answer it in the chat box by uh, choosing the correct option and then maybe i will uh, discuss each of these points so this session is a kind of some numerical problems are also there and this kind of optional uh, mcq questions are also there right so uh, first question is as per the relationship between transport related energy consumption and urban density right so the relation between the transportation related energy consumption and urban density so the question is a higher urban density means what and therefore what it results in right so whether a higher urban density means the safer travel or it means more compact nature of the city or it means that more older people are living in that particular city or it's mean that it is not a compact city or it is a less compact city and therefore whether it is uh, where uh, whether it, it is uh, responsible for less transportation related casualty or uh, you have less distance to travel or you have less travel ridership of the people right or you have more distance to travel right so these are the a b c d four options so i hope the question is clear to you if you have any uh, queries uh, regarding the question itself if you have some understanding problem you can also ask and i would encourage you to try first you can in the chat box you can like write whatever you feel will be the correct answer right and then i will uh, start uh, explaining those things so just take a few seconds to read the question again and then maybe you can answer so i am waiting for your response in the chat box whatever you feel you may answer so is it like higher urban density means the compact nature is it defining the compact nature of the city or it is associated with safer travel what what do you think or is it like higher urban density means that more older people are living in the city what do you think a density density means it's a compact nature right that's why it is called compact nature that is associated with higher urban density so if you have higher urban density then what would happen if, if, do you have less distance to travel or do you have more distance to travel or is it associated with less ridership or is it associated with less transport casualty so if your urban density is high that means more number of buildings and offices are compacting at a particular area so then your transport casualty may may also be high because your uh, vehicle ownership will increase and your on road vehicles number will increase in a particular re- region so there is a chance that it will not be less but it will be more in terms of casualty right transport is a re- related casualties so then less travel ridership no as i have explained if you have more number of vehicles and if more people are there so there will be more travel ridership not less so do you have more distance to travel because your city is compact in nature so you have less distance to travel not more distance to travel right so the question one the correct answer would be this right this and this right not this uh 
कैन यू जस्ट म्यूट कैन यू जस्ट म्यूट ज्योति कुमार कैन यू जस्ट म्यूट योर माइक्रोफोन ज्योति कुमार ज्योति ज्योति कुमार जस्ट म्यूट योर माइक्रोफोन ओके सो एज हु आर ज्वाइंट लेट सो यू कैन ट्राई दिस क्वेश्चन एंड यू कैन आंसर इन दी चैट बॉक्स so if you want to try you just try i just started this is the first question so as urban density is high so is it leads to more compact nature of this city or it is leads to less compact nature of the city or is it related to safer travel or more older people living in the city or uh, therefore is it also affecting the uh, uh, transportation casualty or is it related to less or more distance of travel so i already explained it will be b right so as your uh, urban density higher so it actually signifies your city is more compact and as your city is more compact so you have less distance to travel so distance is not more means within a cbd area kind of thing so also there will be more ridership not less right so the here the correct answer would be b so then the next question is what scale of an nmt that is not non motorized transport is selected for a city if there is a proposed bus transit system or a detailed project report dpr for that particular system exists so as uh, we already know that if you plan for a nmt so you could do it in the four scale right so it can be of the whole city it may be considering some pockets of areas also it may be along a particular corridor maybe maybe congested corridor because that that's why we want uh, nmt infrastructure along that particular corridor and last one is the street level for a particular streets so if you have a proposed bus transit system available with its detailed project report for that particular system so what kind of scale should you choose so i would encourage every participant to first uh, they can attempt and they can write their answers in the chat box in the form of a p c d so then maybe i will discuss right so i will wait for few seconds for your response then i will again start right, discussion so you just try what would be the scale of the nmt c corridor level devesh okay anyone so what other participants are saying c okay so actually you are right it is c so now why it is not a because you do not have your c md that is comprehensive mobility plan or your development plan which is called city development plan these things if those are not available so you cannot do it on the city scale right so for the area level also you need some kind of uh, what are the new transit station and what are the other uh, details so those things are also not available what is available is the brts system because generally this brts or bts bus transit systems are uh, planned along a particular corridors and as you have available this detailed project report for that system only so this will be the correct answer right so i think i don't need to discuss more because since you already know this answer so this is the just uh, the map so then what type of sampling does the diagram represents so also like the previous one you just try to answer is it is it simple random sampling is it stratified is it systemic is it cluster so what is this pattern 
to be stratified okay they were saying and then uh, other participants what do you think would be the correct answer what would be the correct answer is it simple random is it stratified is it systemic is it cluster so i am waiting for another few seconds before i start discussing so so let me discuss so what is simple random sampling so random means suppose you have some certain balls so if you are choosing ball or picking the balls so it can be anything it can be two three red balls also it can be blue balls then it can be anything it is not a particular pattern it does not follow a particular pattern it is a random thing right so that is random so what is stratified stratified means suppose you went for a survey okay so suppose you went for a survey right so su suppose you went for a survey uh maybe at a bus stop and you choose that i should be sample only the male population not the female so then you have the whole random population by you selecting a particular strata or layer so that is called stratified sampling right so then what is systematic systemic means or systematic means so it has a certain pattern so if it is red blue green yellow then red blue green yellow so it is following a particular pattern right or it may be odd numbers so 1 3 5 7 so it is or it is a recurring pattern right so it is following a pattern so then what is this cluster sampling cluster means suppose you have a city wide population to survey right so now if you go at a particular place and you take some few samples based on the minimum sample criteria and take those uh, results and try to model something then it is not a representation of all the is the whole city right because uh, depending on the location and depending on various other things the sample population might vary so now what you want you want to cluster or club the observation in such a way that maybe for that particular zone i can take one point and take the population and for the particular other zone i will take another point and do a survey so like is that for a particular city maybe you have some four clusters so if you go to that four region and do some sample uh, data collection then maybe it is a uh, more rational way to do it right so it is a cluster sample so here if you see so uh, like red 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 then blue 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 then this and then this right so it's a following certain pattern so what is stratified stratified means you are following only the red that is stratified so it is not here it is it is following certain pattern so it is not stratified it is systemic sampling right so i hope it is clear now it is what i have just discussed the large geographically dispersed population if you want to survey it then you use the cluster sample right so now uh, this question is a public bike sharing system has the following demand curve right so this is a demand curve what is demand curve as your uh, as your price increases your trips decreases or people will not be willing to avail that service because of the high price right so as your trips increases the price decreases your trip will be uh, number of trips will be increased right so then determine the consumer surplus earned by decreasing the fare from 5 to 3 so i would encourage you to try first i will discuss and i will also try to solve it. so first you just try it what is what will be the correct option a b c d so then i will discuss what is the consumer surplus and how it is calculated so this is the fare 5 and now you decrease it to 
then what will be the consumer surplus earned right so i will wait for some few seconds so that you figure out the problem and you try to answer and then i will uh, solve it maybe i i will try to start discussing about what is consumer surplus so suppose you have price like this ticket price 25 then you increase it to 30 then 35 then 40 then 45 then 50 right so as you increase the price your demand also goes decrease right so first it was six number of people maybe availing a particular service then five then four then three then two then one so if your fare is 50 so one only one people are willing to use that service right so basically consumer surplus means what is essentially means that what is a customer is willing to pay and what is is actually paying so suppose you for a particular metro service suppose uh, you have hypothetically uh, in mind that i will pay maximum 40 rupees for that particular service but maybe actually you are paying 20 rupees so what is your consumer surplus then? it is 20 rupees right so suppose uh, at a price 50 only one people are using the service right so then if you decrease it to 45 from 55 50 right so now one people added like one people already using the service and one people actually added because you decrease your price so one more people who is willing to pay 45 and one people is willing to pay 50 so what is the consumer surplus then so this people actually is willing to pay 50 but now as your price is 45 actually it is paying what it is paying 45 so what is that particular customer consumer surplus it is 5 rupees right it is 5 rupees because there are two customer but one customer is happy with paying 45 and one customer is willing to pay more than 45 that is 50 but actually it is paying 45 so here consumer surplus is only 5 rupees at that price so now even if you go further and reduce the price 40 so now what happened one more people added like one more people is willing to pay that price so one people is willing to pay 40 rupees only and actually he is paying 40 rupees right but the other people he is willing to pay 45 but now actually what he is paying he is paying 40 so what is its consumer surplus it is 5 right and what about this people he is willing to pay 50 rupees but now actually what is he is paying is 40 rupees so his consumer surplus is 10 so then at a price 40 what is his consumer surplus it is 50 right so that's how it is calculated basically right so also if you are not able to understanding or if you have some difficulty you can directly ask here so now if your price is 8 rupees suppose from the diagram so what is your consumer surplus then so at this price this 20 trips are happening right 20 trips are happening so what is the consumer surplus consumer surplus is nothing but the area of that particular trip right because this 20 people and if you calculate the area it will be like what half into 5 means 5 5 into 8 40 so consumer surplus of the area is 40 so at that price the consumer surplus is 40 right so now there are three things one is consumer surplus that's what i said now if your price is 50 then your consumer surplus area is this right so what is now your consumer surplus is 10 minus 5 is 5 5 into 50 250 250 by what 2 because of the area half in triangle area half into base into height right so it is 125 if you reduce it to 5 so now if i ask what is the net benefit so be- before your price is 8 right that time your consumer surplus was 40 so now your price is 5 so your consumer surplus is 125 so the net benefit is 125 minus 40 right so now if you see what is the consumer surplus earned 
so now if you look at this 5 to 3 so if you deduct it like in the 5 at price 5 50 people are using the service so even if price has been lower so they are actually using the service but what the additional people are using the service at 3 20 people because if you reduce the price 70 people are using the service not 50 so your additional customer is 20 so additional customer if it is 20 this and if this is 2 into 2 right and the area of the triangle is half so this is the consumer surplus earned new customer are earning old customer are always earning right because they are actually they are able to pay 5 now if you reduce it to 3 they are happy because they are willing to pay 5 so he, he, now they are paying 3 so they are happy that is not consumer surplus earned so what is the surplus number of consumers it is 20 so what is the earned earned is like 20 so the answer will be 20 rupees per kilometer because this is the your uh, unit so uh, do, do you understand this or you have some difficulty till now so if you can say yes then i will move to the next question if you say no then you can ask what you did not get then maybe i will try to explain once again so there are three things one is consumer surplus at a particular fixed price so if you reduce the price so there are additional consumer surplus earned that is here what is the gained consumer surplus and then if you detect to consumer surpluses because if you reduce the price then your price will be like your total earning will be more so what is the net benefit so shall i go to the next question or uh, uh, like you will take some time to understand it will be better if you just respond i am not able to hear if you can clear you can message also means in the chat box you can write I hope it's clear then I am just okay. So the uh, the problem now the next problem is three M A NMT alternatives were selected for a neighborhood to encourage more people using this NMT right. So the transport planner has to select the best alternative based on uh, based on increased safety and reduce emissions so based on that transport planner has to select what would be the alternative so now you need to choose as a transport planner you need to choose what is the best alternative right so using the benefit to cost ratio method so if the economic life of the project is considered to be 20 year with a interest rate is 2.5 percent per annum so this is the value this is the alternate a b and c right three alternates are given so this is the kind of fixed cost because this is kind of you can imagine as a capital cost so if you have some alternate to design so what will be your fixed cost right so then uh, there will be some operational and maintenance cost so this column signifies that operational and maintenance cost it will be per year right because per year you will you need to maintain it right for 20 years because that's the lifetime of that particular uh, design so then what is the benefits so annual savings in accidents if you convert it to a monetary sum so it, it is this then what is the emission if you convert it to monetary sums it is this and what is the health overall health savings right? so these three are the benefits so then uh, based on that you need to choose what design you need to adopt right so then using benefit cost ratio method so uh, how do you calculate it so based on the formula right so if your n is equal to n is equal to 0 to 20 then what will be your total benefits and then what will be your 1 plus i 
to the power n right so this is the formula so if you replace this b to cn that is cost and that is benefit so if you calculate the benefit and cost and if you just divide the benefit by cost then you will get what is the value so which value is more that is benefit is more uh, that alternative will choose right so uh, practically if it is greater than zero then also you can choose but uh, because there are three alternatives and if everything is greater than zero so what will be the maximum value we will choose it so uh, can you just uh, try to calculate the values because also other thing is in case of cost this is a fixed cost so it will not vary with years so it is a fixed thing so you need to calculate that c by this formula for only this and you just add this c0 right and then you calculate the bi and then you divide it so i will wait uh, for you to calculate so that you will also will like 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 you will also able to calculate if you are getting the same problem so it will take some time if you have calculator then it will be easy because uh, like you, you need to add 7000 plus 2000 plus 200 right and then uh, you need to calculate 1 plus this 0.25 like 0.25 to the power 20 and not 20 because it will be first 0 then 1 then 2 that up to 20 so then you add the all values so you you, you can take this uh, 7 2 and uh, uh, 9000 and 9200 in common and then you can calculate 1 by i 1 by 1 plus i to the power 0 plus 1 by 1 plus to the power 1 plus 2 like that so that will, this will give you some estimate and then you can uh, multiply it with this 9200 right so i will wait you at least uh, try it because if you don't try it so there may be some kind of difficulty in understanding the formula also sometimes happens so i will wait finally maybe uh just you you just start calculating right i will also help if you want me also to calculate i i can calculate also so first what will be the uh, what will be the uh, first 1 by i component to the power 0 right so it will be 1 by 1 plus i whatever the i is because to the power 0 it will be 1 right so the first value will be 1 right next value will be what 1 point uh, because it is 2.5 so it is 2.5 plus 1 then 1.025 plus 1 to the power 1 means 1 1 by is second is 0.49 right so 0.49 1 plus 0.49 then the second will be 1.025 1 plus 0.025 plus 1.025 to the power 2 1 1 answer it will be 0.95 so are you are you able to calculate at least some values i know it will take some time but are you uh, like trying to calculate it because first value is 1 right second will be 1.025 1.025 by 1.025.975.975 third value is what 0.95.95 because i am using the mouse so it is very difficult to write it in the screen but i am trying i am just saying the values also so then it's 1.025 to the power 4 so if you see it is 0.905 it, it will decrease because your n is increasing so 1 by n means it will decrease right so if you go further and further away it will decrease so just you calculate some values so that i know that actually you are 0 1 2 3 and 4 so you are able to calculate it right so are you calculating it or shall i just tell the final values 
so okay let me tell the values so for first one it will if you calculate it will come out to be 2.09 it will be 1.95 third one will be 2.90 so now just tell me by looking at this value which alternate to choose if your benefit to cost ratio is this which alternate to choose now i think you can tell me 2.09 1.95 what will be the alternative because benefit to cost ratio will be high means benefit will be high cost will be low right so your this will be the 2.90 or this c it will be the best alternative right so i hope it's clear so let me go to the next question so determine the best alternative for the neighborhood using scaled criteria method so what is scale criteria method as you discuss this cost cost is in ratio scale so what is ratio scale ratio means every operation is possible addition subtraction multiplication division everything is possible possible means it is making sense so if it is a real real it is a cost so if you uh, divide it 140 by 2 so it is implies that it has significant meaning so if you also add it you also multiply it so it has significant meaning right so the cost is a ratio variable so aesthetic is not ratio it is a interval type of variable so percentage of expert type of thing and your public opinion it's a just to ordinal ordinal means good better best it's like that it's nothing short of a numeric quantification type so now you need to determine the best alternative among this abc using the neighborhood scaled criteria method so what is neighborhood scale criteria so you need to because they are on different scale so you need to combine it using a particular scale so suppose i want to combine it using the interval scale of 0 to 100 right so suppose this is cost 140 i can equivalent this cost 140 equal to 100 suppose i can take this as 70 80 or 90 also within 0 to 100 but suppose i am i want that 140 is my highest value it is 100 so i can take it so if it is 100 so what is 110 then so 110 will be 100 minus 140 into 110 So it will come out to be close to seventy nine, seventy nine. Right. So then, what will be your, uh, what will be your, this eighty? So eighty, if I calculate it, it will be around fifty seven. So now, if you see, it is zero to hundred scale. We just calculate it, right? So it is already in zero to hundred scale only. The values, the variability. so now what will be the public opinion so favorable neutral and unfavorable so unfavorable will be the low value favorable will be the high value and neutral will be the summer middle value so if i take it as 50 i can take it as 40 also just this is just for illustration so favorable may be 70 may be 80 may be 90 so maybe i can take it is as maybe 10 and maybe i can take it as 90 so your middle value is 50 your unfavorable value is 10 and your favorable value is 90 right you can take any values here for your calculation so this is just a representation so suppose now you want to calculate the best alternative so suppose this cost is slightly misleading if i can this I can change it to benefit then your calculation will be much easier right so if it is a benefit so now for alternative a you are benefiting 100 like your total estimated benefit in terms of monetary sum is 100 and your aesthetic is 70% of the expert are saying that you should adopt this so 100 plus 70 is 170 and your public are saying 50% public are saying that you can use it so suppose 150 to 20 for a it is 220 total is right so for b what is the value it is 57 20 77 plus 90 so 
plus 90 comes out to be 167. So then what is C? For C it will be 79 plus 100, 170. Okay. 179. So what will you choose? So if your benefit for a particular project in your aesthetics and your public opinion both are high then then only your a value will be high right so if this is so so your a will be the best criteria right to choose among this criteria uh, but also uh, uh, like if it is cost then it may be associated with some negative value because your cost is may not be equivalent to a benefit so it is depending on what is your interpretation would be for this particular problem so then uh, which of the following is a time of primary survey so if you heard there are three types of data collection one is primary data or primary data collection survey uh, second is the secondary data collection survey and then the tertiary so uh, this uh, which of these fallen under together uh, falling under the umbrella of this primary survey so just uh, try to answer before I explain what is the primary, what is the secondary and what is the tertiary survey, right? So just uh, try to, to think what would be the primary survey. What is primary survey? Like it is directly done by you. It's like that. So what will be the primary survey? Is it the spot speed? Uh, if you know the radar gun, so if we point out the radar gun towards a vehicle, then we can measure the speed of that particular vehicle at that particular instance. So that is the spot speed. So then the traffic speed. So as a whole, if you want to uh, measure the traffic speed, so if you have a video camera set up and if you see the vehicles are uh, crossing, then if you, uh, from the video camera, if you uh, draw to reference line, and then if you calculate the distance between that uh, reference line and the uh, average speed or uh, if you want to calculate speed so maybe the time of, of not one vehicle so maybe uh, maybe five vehicles are crossing that particular reference one to reference two line so uh, what will be the uh, speed of a particular vehicle suppose 50 then the second vehicle is not speed because we are calculating speed so maybe uh, the uh, distance and the time. So, what is the particular vehicle taking time from uh, going from point A to B? So, then T1, T2, 3, 3, 3, 4, you can take the average of T1, T2, 3, 3, 3, 4 as T, and then you can use L equal to VT formula to calculate your speed, right? Which is uh, length divided by your uh, what is the average, uh, suppose T bar, right? So that's why you, that's how we calculate your traffic speed. So then what will be the delay survey? So delay can be calculated like this. So if you have a particular stretch, so suppose uh, you have this stretch, right? So vehicles are crossing. So now at a particular hour, say morning 10 a.m. So suppose you know that the time it is taking for that 100 meter stretch, the vehicles are taking maybe, uh, maybe 5 minutes, right? And maybe in the morning, 6 am the same stretch if you take uh, if you see the maybe vehicles are taking only one minute to traverse the same stretch of road so what will be your delay in at 10 am so the delay could be four minutes because in the morning that is the usual travel time and because of the vehicle uh, vehicles are accumulating during the peak hour or as the your office hour is reaching so maybe it is taking longer time so that what is the additional time that is vehicle is taking so that is called a delay or the delay survey right so it is just a simplification there are many kinds of delay survey and then we are saying that all of this is a primary survey so uh, i am waiting for your response uh, before i actually say that what you what will be the correct answer so i have explained how you can calculate the all the things now I think if you can think it, I think you will be able to answer. So I am waiting for a uh, few more minutes before I uh, 
uh, start discussion right what will be the primary survey is it spot speed traffic speed relay survey or every like all the three options are there you are saying that it is nothing but a devesh okay so you are saying all of the above so what other participants are saying just try to think and answer okay so actually you are correct every survey what i have explained the method all are primary survey so then we need to know that what is primary and what is secondary survey right so what is secondary data or secondary survey so secondary data is if you take any data that is not directly collected by you you are taking from other suppose you are taking from a research paper right or you are taking from some another third person right it is not a directly collected by you so it is called a secondary data or secondary data and as well as the secondary survey so what is your tertiary survey so the tertiary survey means that if some data is publicly available right nowadays uh, like uh, delhi uh, and also for for few other cities they are actually uh, opening the transit data so how your what is the time the bus is dispatching and uh, locating at different uh, stations so those are kind of now publicly available data so if you use that data it is called a kind of tertiary source of data right it is not primary and secondary right. okay so then uh, this is easy question i think what is the source of data on mode share and trip rates so uh, suppose uh, what mode of vehicle are you using are you using a bicycle for a particular trip or are you using motorcycle your motorized two wheeler or are you using a uh, cabs or are you using your personalized uh, cars right and what is the trip rate how many trips are happening uh, using a particular uh, mode of uh, travel right so those kinds of information are available in traffic police fir or pollution control board what data they are actually collecting or is it a part of comprehensive mobility plan of the city or is it a part of the census data so i believe it is very easy so i i will not immediately say what is the correct answer so rather i would encourage you to uh, answer it right so mode share and trip rates just tell me what would be the uh, data source so who collects so what actually traffic police say if i data collects are they collecting the mode share and trip rates of a particular city no or yes what the pollution control board what 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 kind of data actually they are having what is inside a uh, comprehensive mobility plan of a particular city right so then what is the census data? so everything i think is known to you so what kind of data they are actually collecting so shall i expect you to answer i should wait for few more seconds right i think you can guess it your guess will be correct i think so traffic police fir what kind of data they are having usually related to transportation and modes So basically they are collecting the accident data right if you do a fir means some accident are happening or some fatalities are happening due to the accident right so they are having this traffic police fir data in the context of transportation i am saying so then pollution control board they measures what they measure the pollution levels of a particular city suppose uh, they have some kind of remote control uh, station set up in particular locations around the city and then the whole data they will collect what is the carbon dioxide emissions what is the uh, other carbon monoxide gas emissions then what is the volatile carbonized emissions right so those kinds of data uh, basically stored in pollution control board basically takes care of those kinds of data 
the sensors data is basically populations right we know already these sensors after 10 years usually they update the sensors right last sensor was 2011 so uh, by the time i think i believe 2021 census data has been uh, in the website uh, or maybe calculated so then what is the comprehensive mobility plan so as you know it is a mobility plan so like the movement plan so what kind of food share and their trip rates will be under this mobility plan right so the correct answer would be what it would be c so for this question is fare of a particular trip accident cost health and environmental hazards are example of what kind of costs so are there cost to government that is government are paying those costs or government or is it that the users who are using this they are actually basically a, basically are uh, giving that cost right or is it some kind of miscellaneous cost so it is not uh, to a particular user or not to a particular government but it is a kind of other cost I know. or it, it is all the above are example of uh, basically uh, May, may fall under this kind of cost. So, what would be the correct answer? Tell me. So, fare usually paid by government or usually paid by users. So, if your fare is high, so who will be the negatively affected people? So, it will be the people or the commuters or the users, right? So, then if accidents is happening, what will be the cost to government? Maybe uh, there is a certain cost to the government as well due to the in the form of aid and maybe it will affect the GDP, but the primary stakeholder is always the users or the commuters. Because in case of death, it is not compensatable thing, right? If you give some money, it will not compensate. And even if there are major injuries are happening in the accident, then also it will be quite challenging, right? So then also health and environmental hazard means, so if you are using vehicles and it is emitting lots of carbon dioxide, so it is not that it is affecting the government body as a whole. It is affecting the individual users or the people. Right? So the correct answer here would be the cost to the users, not the miscellaneous cost and the cost of government. Right? So I think this is the end of today's session. So if you have any more queries or if you have some doubts regarding uh, not only regarding these questions but also regarding the uh, anything that had been taught to you in the week 5 uh, in the course of MUTS or Multimodal Urban Transportation System uh, you are free, free you can feel free to ask me right uh, then I will wrap up the session for today so tell me if you have any queries or any kind of questions to ask Tell me, I am waiting for your responses. If you have nothing to ask, then I will just end the session. Otherwise, you can ask. I will be happy to answer. Well, please respond because if you are not responding, then I will not be able to. know that what actually you want. Tevesh and Tribeni, please try to respond. If you have any questions or shall I, shall we close this for this week? Is it that I, I am not audible? Tevesh and Tribeni, Am I not audible? Okay, then just respond that if you have any queries, just you can ask. If no also, then also you can message that no, we don't have any queries to ask, then we will just close it.
प्लीज रिस्पोंड प्लीज रिस्पोंड त्रिवेणी इंद्रवेश आई एम वेटिंग फॉर योर रिस्पॉन्स सो थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग इन आई थिंक टुडे वी शैल क्लोज द सेशन I believe you do not have any question to or queries to ask further. So we'll meet at the next session, the next week, right? So thank you all. So I am closing the session, right?